Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment on this video saying I subscribed. Let's get into it. According to latest reports, the project to develop a new engine based on the Cavalry engine is almost over, and India will not be pursuing the co-development offer with France, since the end product will not be indigenous enough for the forces to consider. There is no urgent push for local engine developments in India, even though the country is witnessing scaling up of indigenous fighter jet projects which will have a requirement of more than 3,000 engines for the next 40 years. According to an official, India is aggressively pursuing the development of military jets and helicopter programs, and the imported engines make up nearly 25 to 30 percent of the cost of the product in each aircraft. India currently needs public-private consortium of companies who can collaborate on the projects, as no matter the level of transfer of technology from foreign manufacturers, they will always restrict the export rights of the product. According to latest reports, the fate of the 60,000 crore rupees future infantry combat vehicle project will now be decided by the next government. The project is stuck due to the lack of decision from the Ministry of Defence and the service headquarters, and according to media reports, the Ministry of Defence has been pushing the industry to invest around 90% of the funds to develop the prototype, but due to the lack of any commitment from the end user, there has been reluctance from the industry. The vehicle is expected to have minimum 40% indigenous content, and some of the potential original equipment manufacturers include Russian companies under the umbrella of Rosberon Export, General Dynamics of the US, and Germany's Rain Metal Defense. The US recently conducted a full-scale mock-up of the Chinese J-20 for study and training purposes, and according to a top aviation expert, the Chinese J-20 has strong stealth from a front aspect, but it has a larger radar cross-section from the side and the rear part, and this limitation has also been found in the Russian Su-57 stealth fighter jet. International observers have also concluded that the aircraft possessed high speed and long operational range, but it lacks the maneuverability that is necessary to prevail in close engagements. The Chinese designers have expressed interest in incorporating thrust vector engines in the J-20, and interestingly, China had recently acquired Su-35 fighters from Russia with thrust vector engines. According to latest reports, the Indian Army has approved the emergency purchase of 240 spike systems and 12 launchers made by Israel's Rafale Advanced Defense System, to meet the immediate operational requirements of the Indian Army. The decision to procure the systems was made during the Indian Army's Commanders Conference in New Delhi, and the procurement will be under the emergency provision, without having to get the approval from the Defense Ministry. According to latest reports, the Indian government will soon procure mine-protected vehicles for the movement of paramilitary troops, and remotely operated vehicles for the National Security Guard. The expenditure sanction for 614 crore rupees has been issued to paramilitary forces for the purchase of additional mine-protected vehicles and bulletproof jackets, while 16.9 crore rupees has also been issued to the National Security Guard for the purchase of seven remotely operated vehicles. According to latest reports, the US decision to end the oil sanctions waiver will not affect India's investments in the Chabahar port. While India may have been insulated on the Chabahar front, its current plan on using the rupee payment for Iranian oil might be affected. If India violates the sanctions and continues to buy oil from Iran, India risks inviting secondary sanctions on Indian companies, and these would include a ban on using the international SWIFT system.